I don't know where to start with this one. Everything from Thor's costume to Taika's hair is out of control like Blizzard's work environment. Even Christian Bale was entranced by this mess and dragged down into the mire like Frodo in the Dead Marshes. And all the consumers defending this film by saying, it's a comedy so don't expect it to be good. Bullshit. Plenty of comedy or good movies and make you laugh with a fraction the jokes this film sprays on us like R. Kelly pretending to be a drinking fountain. Then there's my least favorite, just turn your brain off and you'll enjoy it. Absolutely not. Even the women you stalk on Tinder wouldn't lower their bar enough to fuck you. What makes you think I would be willing to enjoy this cheese grater across the nuts? You people are like intellectual Cenobites. What the fuck makes you think this copy-paste, manufactured, color-by-numbers, artificial corporate sludge designed to make the money printer go burr is a good idea? Even Mr. Krabs saw through this bullshit when he learned how twisted his beloved restaurant had become after he accepted the buyout. Right, have the cockthroats gone? Good. Marvel, let's have a talk. Believe it or not, I'm on your side. Like many fans of various franchises, I don't like or want to see the things I enjoy go down the shitter when we know greatness can be achieved. Everyone was concerned Iron Man was destined for the scrap heap, but you proved most of us wrong with it being a very enjoyable and one of the handful of objectively good films in the MCU. That's the problem, though. Only a few movies had effort put into them by a team with the passion to achieve and inspire. For every Iron Man or Captain America, there's a gaggle of terrible shows or movies with all the collective intelligence of a swarm of horseflies. And if you haven't figured it out yet, Thor Love and Thunder actually reflects your current mindset, business plan, and thus failures, so I suggest you listen to what I have to say and reflect on these words lest you one day look into a mirror and turn to stone like Medusa trying on clothes. We all know superheroes are modern mythology. The lessons learned, for better or worse, should inspire or give warning to people so they can become better than they were yesterday. Superman's hope, Batman's determination, Iron Man's redemption, Goku's drive, take your pick. All of these characters are paragons of the virtues they embody. What have you taught recently? Again, Iron Man was already mentioned and Captain America was just a good guy standing up to bullies. What did Shang-Chi teach? The Eternals. What about Loki or Hawkeye? Eh, don't worry, I'll wait. You've fallen from grace so willingly and allowed most of the heroes under your watch to be destroyed, mocked, and deconstructed because your overlords demand you produce movies and shows faster than Sonic on Adderall. And due to these oversights, why in the hell is Thor still trying to find himself after four movies? We've already done this three times, not including the Avengers films. Thor now is the annoying friend you don't want to deal with but tolerate because your uber left you at the party. He learned humility and to fight for those he loved. Now he destroys monuments with complete disregard and plays the pity card because he's sad and lonely. This isn't progression, it is regression. It is everything people do not want to see in fictional characters because people see it in those around them day to day. People want to escape. We want to be inspired. We want good stories. When you have interviews with Taika Waititi pointing out the low-quality special effects of his own movie, when Chris Hemsworth says in another interview alongside and trying to speak over Taika says the story was sacrificed for the sake of jokes, we notice that. It doesn't fill us with hope, instead it makes us roll our eyes like Jerry smashing Tom upside the head with a frying pan. I mentioned this in my top fives of 2021 that Shang-Chi was uninspiring and frankly I think that's the biggest sin you're already infamous phase bore has committed. And much of it is because your stories are also being sacrificed on the altar of politics. Why haven't you figured out the correlation between constantly forcing the metaphorical big gay down kids' throats and your movies financially failing like David Hogg trying to start a pillow company? I feel like Steve the Monster explaining the obvious to the Powerpuff Girls. You don't need the politics, the exponentially increasing cast of characters that no one can keep up with, or so much CGI that your own fandom starts to question reality. Just a good story. That's it. I don't want to have to point all of this out either. We're all adults here. No one criticizes your movies because they actively hate them. It's because what they want to see is you do better like you did before. These heroes used to be intelligent, like Captain America tactically leading the Avengers in New York. These heroes had heartfelt moments with all the seriousness of a heart attack, like Thor being stripped of his power because of his hubris. These heroes used to be funny, like Tony's response when Pepper walked in on him getting his armor removed. I haven't seen Iron Man in God knows 
how many years, and I remember almost every joke in that film while I have forgotten every fucking one that was in Thor Love and Thunder and I saw it two days ago. What you made is historical. While not a unique idea, every franchise has been desperately playing catch up because you were the ones that more or less solidified the modern cinematic universe in film like Oblivion did open world RPGs in video games. You've done it once before. But now it's a question of whether or not you'll stand up for yourselves, set the bar just out of reach, and try jumping for it again. Now I better get back to what I was doing, in case any obsessive fanboys skip to the end. And another thing, the weapons are now sentient, which calls so many past, present, and future moments into question because this film plays fast and loose with the rules like the Clintons do the law. Of course Thor love and blunder is awful. Between this and Doctor Strange 2, I genuinely don't know which one is worse. I mean, Taika have even left Tessa Thompson's wake-up twitch reaction in the fucking movie. My God, I know I was bored during the Black Phone, but at least the writing and the characters kept me engaged, unlike this film's own actors. In fact, Please, click the link above to hear my thoughts on that little thriller, and maybe you'll want to support it instead of this $250 million Dutch oven. And please, subscribe to join my kingdom.